This video will explain Internet Augmented Dialogue Generation, the other half of the new advancement in the BlenderBot 2.0 open source chatbot from Facebook AI. So currently we have these static language models or static natural language processing systems, meaning that the models are trained on snapshots of time for these data sets. So say you take a Wikipedia snapshot of February 2019 or a web scrape of February 2019, and this is the information that's used to train these natural language processing systems, and compare that to the dynamic state of the world where we have new information coming in every day or even at every minute depending on the domain. So to update these static language models, you might try to add this new information to the training data set and then have to fit it which could take a long time and depending on the size of the models could be challenging and there are things like catastrophic forgetting and so on. So generally these static language models aren't well adapted to handle the dynamic state of the world. Another problem of language models that can be limited to this idea of modeling these static data sets is hallucination. Hallucination describes when the language model will confidently output something that's completely incorrect. So you ask it a question, it'll still generate something totally incorrect confidently, or it will hallucinate and generate URLs to web pages that don't exist. Say it's the codex model from OpenAI, it might generate some code that wouldn't actually compile. This hallucination problem is a big issue with these text generation systems. So the authors reason that hallucination is a form of lossy compression, as it's trying to encode the static data set into the weights of a neural network. So say you have uh, 350 gigabytes of text and you're trying to compare that, uh, compress that into a uh, 400 million parameter language model or whatever the case may be. So I highly recommend checking out this demo of the GPT uh, Neo model and then just trying some prompts and it won't be long before you can find an example of hallucination. Maybe ask it to ask it to recommend you some web page or if you look, if you give it some kind of code uh, documentation, it'll probably give you uh, stack overflow link that doesn't actually take you anywhere. So the paper has a further illustration of this problem of hallucination. On the left we have the BART model that's trained with this static data set and it hallucinates this kind of uh, drink. So it, it's a martini and it will generate, you ask it what's in this martini and it'll say it's a mix of vodka, rum, and brandy to give you an incorrect uh, answer and it'll just generate that confidently. You can't really detect when it's hallucinated. This is the problem of these uh, static language models and particularly this issue of hallucination in addition to the idea of updating it with new information. So this paper is going to test the difference between static and dynamic modeling and not even just the static modeling where we try to compress all of this previous data like all of Wikipedia into one language model. The static modeling where we have uh, encodings for each of the Wikipedia pages and then we generate a query and match that query or just with the uh, document index or we just have the context and match that context with the document index. So these are ideas like these information retrieval systems like retrieval augmented generation and fusion into coder or say the rail model from Google where we're trying to uh, build up this document index and then use this retrieval to help with generation and then we're comparing that paradigm where we have again the static snapshot of C4 with this internet augmentation where we're going to generate a search query and then condition the generation on the response from the query. So the key difference is that instead of looking at the document index we're going to be looking at the results from a search API. So with the static snapshot or the cached set of pages we have the retrieval augmented generation, the fusion, uh, fusion in decoder, the fusion in decoder with the retrieval augmented generation and then we have the index with the search query based retrieval mechanism. So we generate a search query and then we match that search query with the document uh, context to perform the retrieval compared to the uh, just nearest neighbors with the encoders in say these two different uh, retrieval augmented generation models where they have differences in the architecture and in the way that they put gradients back into the uh, document retriever. So here's the big idea b behind the paper and the internet augmented dialogue generation. So here's the procedure. We're going to have a search query generator which is an encoder decoder transformer that takes in the dialogue context as input and then generates a search query. That search query is sent to the Bing search engine API and then end documents are returned. So now we have two forms of supervision. So for this first part, we have the context query annotations from the data set that, we're, that they're going to introduce that we'll explain later in the video. So in the second part is an, a fusion encoder style encoder decoder model that encodes each document individually from the return search query, concatenates them to the dialog context encoding, and then finally generates the response. So we have two different parts of this that can be trained with supervised learning from the data set that's going to be uh, collected in this paper. We have the context query annotations where we uh, learn what kind of search to generate given the uh, chatbot conversation and then we have the aggregation of the context and the return documents from the search engine with the response in the chat session. A key problem with these context augmented models is well documented in hurdles to progress in long form question answering where often these models like Realm from Google or the retrieval augmented generation from Facebook AI aren't really gonna actually use the retrieved documents. They're gonna generate the same answer as if the 
uh, retrieve document wasn't even in the input. And this is also similar to these natural language inference problems where you'll see that it'll do the same classification for the hypothesis regardless of what the premise is as it overfits these kinds of data sets. So their solution to this is knowledge response regularization. Where they're going to be doing multitask learning between the response task and the overall chatbot and the big idea behind these supervised learning data sets of these multi-session chats or whatever the chat is, and then also annotations of salient information in the document. So they're going to be alternating between the chatbot task and then identifying important information in the documents, hoping that this second task will force the attention layers to start to look at the retrieved documents and have this explicit uh, kind of consistency or this kind of extraction task from the retrieved documents. So in order to develop this model, the authors come up with a new scheme for annotating and constructing these data sets with crowd workers. So this is called the wizard of the internet data set. And the first step is for uh, one of the users to select a persona or a, a topic that they're very knowledgeable about. So they have these different topics like uh, the Big Bang Theory TV show, and then the other crowd worker is gonna be using the internet to answer their question, to answer whatever they're talking about and just be informative in the conversation to keep up with this conversation about this expert topic. So say you're having a conversation about the Big Bang Theory TV show and the expert is using the search engine to help inform the conversation. So understanding, so this is the annotation for these search queries is this context and then understanding what to search as well as how to uh, parse the return results into what is eventually generated in the conversation. So here are some statistics about the overall data set that they collect by doing this wizard of the internet task. They collect uh, 9,600 overall dialogues uh, with 8,600 in their train set with this train validation test split for machine learning. Uh, the number of searches that are used, so they have 48,000 different searches that are used in these conversations to help annotate this internet augmentation. And then this plot is showing the domains, very open domain, a ton of different topics that are covered in this uh, range of expertise for having this wizard of internet data collection. So here are some of the results from the study. This is the comparison between a transformer trained to fit this data set without any kind of knowledge augmentation and measured with human valuation across consistency, engagingness of the conversation, and then how knowledgeable it is, showing that the search engine, the internet augmented model performs much better, uh, then ablating through different uh, architecture choices. So the Blenderbot with 2.7 billion parameters or 400 million parameters compared to the BART large or the T5 model. Uh, then looking through an overall collection of these data sets, they have another kind of similar data set called uh, Wizards of Wikipedia, where I'm not sure exactly what the difference is, probably in the way that they use the internet and the way that they have the chat set up, but they compare the results with training on t these two different data sets. Uh, then they also look at, or this is the same plot twice, they also showed these, uh, d again, the different kinds of strategies for integrating the knowledge, whether you're using a search engine or whether you're using a document index with the retrieval augmented generation and these kinds of ideas. So uh, then we have the multitasking, how much this helps, this uh, explicit, this knowledge response regularization where you return the salient information from the uh, return knowledge and how much uh, varying that kind of lambda parameter between the two multitask loss helps with the training. Thank you so much for watching this overview of the internet augmented dialogue generation system, this half of the new Blunderbot 2.0 open source chatbot from Facebook. I think it's really interesting that they use the internet. You'd imagine the internet search itself is built on some kind of static modeling technique as well, maybe some kind of page rank, exactly how the users respond to the uh, web pages and this kind of bounce rate, that kind of additional data that might help improve things like the Bing search engine compared to just some kind of deep learning only system that encodes some collection of documents from Wikipedia or whatever it is. So really interesting overall system in this Blenderbot 2.0 system. Thank you so much for watching this overview of internet augmented dialogue generation. Please stay tuned for the rest of the AI weekly update series and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.